Thankful Thursday. Bless the Lord, everybody. It's Thankful Thursday. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 20, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have too much to be thankful for. This Thankful Thursday, I want you to seize the blessing. I want you to walk up today and make room for unexpected and beautiful blessings that are on the way. You have to set your mindset that I'm thankful and blessings are on my way. I am seizing the opportunity that blessings are coming my way. Be grateful. God is saying to us today that I want to help you. I want to bring you out of your situations. But then there's something that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to stretch. You're going to have to reach beyond what you see. You're going to have to reach beyond how you feel. You're going to have to reach beyond and saying that as you stretch forth, I'm going to cause some things to manifest in your life. And if, if you, you look at what God has done for you, I want you to look back over your life. And I want you to look at where you're at today, where you were yesteryear. I want you to look at how things have manifested in your life. But then now Jesus tells this man, he said that I want you to stretch forth your hand. And now his hand became whole, just like the other one. Now, when you see things happen, people get anger at you. They're looking at you and they're saying that, why you get to do this? Why you get to look like this? Why you get to dress like this? They get angry when the blessings of the Lord start coming up on your life. But now you got to stop looking and trying to please naysayers, but trying to please God. When you start trying to please God, then everything that he promised you will come to pass. Now God is causing us in this season that I'm I'm looking at the possibilities. Lord, you're going to make me better than I was yesterday. Lord, you're going to allow things to happen in my life this year that would not happen last year. Possibilities. And now God is saying that, will you trust me and believe in me in this season? Will you look at the things that you have dealt with and that you have struggled with to not be your norm? But now I'm creating a new norm for your life. Possibilities. And I say, God, that now you're seeing, he says unto him, he said, then he says unto the man, stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored, whole, like as the other. Then he said, the 13th verse, pay attention. Then he said he to the man, stretch forth thine hand. Stretch forth thy hand, which gives him an assignment, giving him a charge to do something. That when God gives us a, 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 a charge in our life, he's giving us instructions that if you do, then I'm going to do. If you open your mouth, then I'm going to back up what you said. But if you never do anything, then you're not giving God the authority to back it up. So he tells him, he says, stretch forth thy hand. He, that means he's giving him an assignment. He's giving him a commandment that there's something that you have to do. And when you do these things, that I'm going to cause something else to manifest in your life. God is trying to get us to trust him beyond what we see. God is trying to get us to look at the situations the way that he sees the situation. And the way that God sees the situation is saying that it's already done. doing well on today because we, we come together. There's something about 
when the people of God come together. And so then as we come to this space, the Bible said that where there's two or three gathered in my name, there he is in the midst. So whether you're in your living rooms, whether you're laying down in the bed, whether you are just riding down the road in your car, that God, we're inviting him in the presence, in the midst of where we're at. And so as we come together, you know, I, I preached a message about possibilities. And on this message about possibilities is saying that, God, can you really do this for me? God, can you make this happen in my life? And all I was doing was showing that the fact that what God is going to do in your life in this season, he's going to show the world that he called you to be different. Why could you do something or why are you doing something different that the rest of your family cannot do? Why did God position you and put you in a place that you're going to make a difference? I'm, I'm reminded about the story of Joseph, how Joseph was um, thrown into the well. He was sold off into slavery, and then he ended up into Potiphar's house and was wrongfully accused, ended up in prison. Get into this place, and he feels like all hope is gone. I can imagine that there was many nights where he cried out and said, you know, God, why me? And this message is for somebody today. And you're asking your same, the same question, Lord, why me? Why did I have to go through the things that I went through? Why did I have to get to a place where I was almost about to lose my mind? Looking back over my life and seeing that how I messed up over here and how, why did I have to go through and have doors closed on me over there? Because God said that I had to allow you to go through because there's possibilities. If you would never have went through anything in your life, you couldn't be the light of hope to help somebody else come out. And that's why when I, I was teaching this message about possibilities, you're getting into a place and you're saying, if God is looking at your life and he's saying, if not you, then who? If God won't do it for you, then who will he do it for? Possibilities. And then I, I look at uh, Joseph's story, uh, Jacob's story and then Jacob went from that place to this place, being thrown into a well, um, sold off into slavery, ended up in part of his house, wrongfully accused, end up in prison. But here's the key to all of what he went through. He got to that place in prison, started deciphering dreams, gave a word, and that one word years later caused his life to change. But he had to go through everything that he went through. He had to go through the broken heartache and pain. He had to go through the rejection. He had to go through people turning their back on him, being in this dark, cold cell, asking God every day, Lord, why me? And you're sitting there, you're saying, Lord, when am I going to come out of this? When am I going to get off of these drugs? When am I going to stop committing adultery? Lord, when am I going to get rid of all of this mess and junk in my life possibilities? Jacob went through the hell, the torment, to end up to a place that one day his life was going to change. One day and one word caused everything that he had went through to be manifested for his glory. God will use your life as a testimony. God will use the things that you went through, the things that caused you sleepless nights. That God will use the thing that you would fill your pillow with tears and you're saying, Lord, when and why am I going through what I'm going through? When am I going to come out of this? And he says that there's a season that I'm allowing you to go through so that when you come out, you go be able to help so many people. He gets to this place ends up telling the king a dream. The king said that there is nobody greater that I want to have in my kingdom but you, Jacob. He gives Jacob a ring and he says that when you speak, you're going to be the strongest voice. You're going to be the second in control. But what if he had never went through being ostracized by his family? What if he would have never went through being sold off into slavery. And look at slavery. It's just falling into sin. 
You're saying, why am I continuing to drink this alcohol? Why am I continuing to smoke these cigarettes? Why am I continuing to lay with this man or this woman? Why am I going through all of this? That was the slavery. That was what the enemy tries to, to, to lead us in our lives, that he wants to keep us into slavery. But then he went to slavery and ends up being wrongfully accused and now gets into prison. There's somebody today that is crying out and saying, I'm in this place of slavery. I'm in this place of being in prison that I feel like that I'm locked in and I can't get out. But there's a word that is about to come and to hit your homes today. While you're riding in your car, while you're sitting in that kitchen, and that's saying God is about to do something in your life in this year that is going to cause the rest of your family to be saved and to allow them to come out. Because of what you went through, you're the gateway to bring everybody else out. And so then I said, God, as we declared this year is the year of the supernatural. What is the supernatural? That's believing God for something in your life that you know man can't do, that you know money can't buy, that you're saying, God, it was only you that calls me to come out. And if you got your Bibles today, I want you to turn with me to the book of Matthew, the 14th chapter. And I won't be before you long today, and I want to start reading. Matthew, the 14th chapter, and I'm going to start reading at the 22nd verse. And it says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him into the other side, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went into a mountain apart to pray. Sometimes God wants to separate us just so we can pray, so he can talk to us. Watch what happens now. And when he, the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. God is about to cause a miracle, something supernatural to happen in your life. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out, for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them and saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. So no matter what you're going through in your life, Jesus is giving us a comfort word. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And I'm going to stop with my point there. I know some of you have heard this message many of times, and yet Peter walked on the water. But the possibilities of what happens, God, uh, the point I want to make to you today, I want to point out what is the supernatural? What is God trying to do? What is God showing us in this season of our lives? And now when you see that, what he got down to say, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit, and they cried out with fear. And the writer tells us in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, it says, for God is not giving us the spirit of fear, but a power power, love, and a sound mind. God wants us to get to a place where we don't be afraid of the unknown. Don't be afraid of the storms that are happening in your life. When the seas and the rages of the waters are coming and you're saying, Lord, I don't have enough money for my bills. Lord, I don't have enough money to put food on my table. Lord, my kids are crying out and saying they're hungry. What I'm going to do? He said, be not afraid. And he's showing them that no matter what happens in your life, no matter what storms you're facing, you got to put your trust in God. And as we're putting our trust in God, God is showing us no matter what happens, I'm going to always be there. That's why the writer says that I would never leave you nor forsake you. God is showing us in this season that I'm going to always be there for you. And he gets to the place now, Peter now looks at him and he's telling them, he said, I don't want you to be afraid of the unknown. I don't want you to be afraid of the things that you can't see. I don't want you to be afraid. And I'm looking at J Joseph's life and as, as, as Jacob, when um, Joseph, when he was thrown into the prison and he went through all that he went through. And I'm saying that at what point in his life was he afraid? At what point in his life did he feel that I want to just give up? Lord, take my life. Don't allow me to be in this place. Don't allow the enemy to ride up over my head. But then he had to say, God had to give him comfort and say, don't be afraid, trust me. And this is a word for somebody today. God wants us to trust him. See, when God's going to take our natural and make it supernatural, all God is saying, trust me. God is saying that in the midst of your trials and your struggles, he said, trust me. When you get feeling tired and you want to give up, he's saying, trust me. When you get into a place where you said, I just want to give up, God is saying, trust me. 
Because the possibilities of what's going to happen, God is about to blow your mind. God is about to show you some things in this year that you've never seen before. God is about to show you that what you went through was just only a test in a trial to get you to your testimony. Trust me. And now when you see that what happens here, that God said, well, well, watch this. And if you got your Bibles, turn with me to 1 John 4 and 18. When you read in 1 John 4 and 18, it says that when God said that I've not given you fear because why? Fear has torment. Fear makes you afraid. Fear cripples you. Fear gets you to a place where you don't see anything else. You can't see God in the midst of your storm. You don't see God bringing you out. You're just afraid of the unknown. Lord, I'm about to drown. Lord, I'm about to lose everything. Lord, my family ain't right. My children ain't right. And God said that that fear is causing you to have torment. And that torment is causing you to say, I can't think straight. I can't sleep right. My mind is messed up. I don't know how to do this and I can't do that because fear has allowed that, you know, fear has come in and caused you to be tormented. And God said, I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to get to this place where you're saying that you can't do this, you can't do that because I have not done this. Fear does not come from me because I've given you faith. I've given you the ability to trust and I'm giving you the ability to look beyond what you see and I want you to see through my eyes. I want you to understand that you're about to arise out of your situation. You're about to arise out of what you're going through. You're about to rise from the struggles that are in your life because the chains are about to fall off. When you look at what's holding you down, the chains are about to fall off. When you look at what has kept you down, the chains are about to fall off. And all God is speaking to you today and said that I'm going to speak a word and the chains are about to fall off of your life because this is your season. And God is saying to you today, I'm about to loose you. I'm about to set you free. Hey guys, I want to thank you for joining me today. But what I want you to do most importantly, I want you to help us continue to do what we do. The Bible talks about seed. In the Bible, in Genesis 8 and 21 and 22, it says, as long as the earth remain, there'll be seed, time, and harvest. And when you plant a seed into this ministry, it will help produce your harvest. When you sow a seed, you continue to help us do the work of this ministry. You continue to help us to change lives. You continue to help people be blessed because of what we do. And you're responsible for making that happen. When you sow a seed into this ministry, you're helping others. So do me a favor. Join us today by helping us help others. Because what he's telling us, he's saying that I want you to walk into this year of the supernatural. And the supernatural is saying that all I'm doing is trusting God for things that I, don't, I can't see. This supernatural is saying that I want you to trust me in things that you don't understand. That supernatural is saying, God, you're going to make a way out of no way. That's the supernatural. And when you start looking at what God is doing and how God is causing things to do, he says that what happens is, is that the chains are about to fall off of your life. The struggle, the things that you have been facing, the issues that you have been dealing with, he said the chains are about to fall off. God is causing things that have had you in a place that has caused you to turn your back on him, that has caused you to lose sight and focus on what God is telling you. He said the chains are about to fall off. See, what the chains represent is, ch is all it's saying is that you're bound. And what has had you bound after year one, after year two, after year three, God said I'm about to release you. And when you read in the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, I'm sorry, Acts, the 12th chapter, when you see that when Peter was imprisoned, the Bible says that the chains have fell off of him. Follow me to the book of Acts, the 12th chapter, and I want you to start reading with me at the fifth verse. When you read Acts 12 and 5, it says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God. See, when they started praying, something happens. See, when we lose sight and we lose focus on God, that means that you're not praying. How many of us still praying to God? How many of us take time and say, Lord, I'm giving you my time, I'm giving you this moment, and I'm praying to you? We pray to God when we have a need, but when we pray to God when everything is all right. We're praying to God when there's a problem, but when we're praying to God when things are going all right. But he said that when the saints started praying, they prayed continually. With ceasing, without ceasing means they can constantly pray to God. When we start praying to God, something starts taking place. And it says that when they, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, 
The same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains in the keepers before the door kept in prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came unto him at the light shine in prison and smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off from on his bands. Now you'll see that this is the second time in Peter's life that the, that the light shined upon him. When you read in Acts the ninth chapter, you'll see that Peter was on his way to, uh, uh, that, that Paul was on his way to persecute the church. And now what happened in this story, you'll see that the light shined from heaven. Paul fell to the ground. And now what God did, he said that, Paul, why do you persecute my church? In this story, you'll see that now Peter was in prison and the same light shined upon him. And when the light shined on him, it spoke to Peter and he said, arise, Peter, and the chains fell off. Today, I want to speak to somebody and I want you to understand that you're about to arise out of your situation. You're about to arise out of what you're going through. You're about to rise from the struggles that are in your life because the chains are about to fall off. When you look at what's holding you down, the chains are about to fall off. When you look at what has kept you down, the chains are about to fall off. And all God is speaking to you today and said that I'm going to speak a word and the chains are about to fall off of your life. When Peter, when Peter sat there and he was sitting there, he thought to wait a minute, I must be dreaming. God is about to show your reality, make it saying that this is what is about to happen in your life. The things that you thought that would never happen in your life, as Peter was sitting there, he was dreaming and he said that this can't be real. God, you got me in prison and they're about to kill me. They're about to crucify me. But what God showed him, he said, it ain't so. He was showing him that something supernatural is about to happen. That supernatural thing is causing what you thought that would not be able to happen. God is saying that I'm about to do it. God is showing you that in this time in your life that what you thought could not be is about to happen. God is saying that what you thought could not come forth is about to happen. God said the thing that you lost hope on is about to change. It's about to happen. God said the thing that you was getting weak on, that you were struggling with, it is about to change for your good. It is about to happen. Now Peter was sitting in prison, and now the angel wakes him up, and he said, Peter, the chains are about to be loosed off of your life. Somebody going to understand today that your life is about to change, that you're about to be set free. God is about to heal your body. God is about to make what couldn't be about to be, because he said that the chains are falling off of you. And he gets into this place, and he says that, Peter... Look at what's happening in your life. You've been praying. People have been praying for you. How many of y'all got a prayer and say, I got a praying mama. I got a praying grandmama. Somebody pray for me because when I wasn't praying, somebody was saying that this is not the way your life is going to be. Somebody was praying for you. When you was in the midst of the clubs, when you were sitting there dropping like it was hot, somebody was praying for you. But then all of a sudden, your life changed. And now God's saying that it is about to happen. The chains are about to fall off. When you were sitting in that crack house with that to your mouth. Somebody was praying for you. When you were sitting there and didn't have nowhere to go, when you were sleeping on the highways, up under bridges, in, in abandoned houses, somebody was praying for you. And God's saying that the chains are about to fall off of your life. And now when you look at what Peter was going through, he said, I'm dreaming. This can't be real. And the angel said, get up from this place, Peter. God is telling you today, get up from that place that you're sitting in. Get up from that place of destitute. Get up from that place of dis despair. Get up from that place of doubt because I am about to do something supernatural in your life. And what God did, he showed him. He said, now, Peter, you're going to come up out of this place and I'm going to bring you from what was and I'm going to bring you to what's about to be. And now when you see what God is going to do in your life, he said, I'm about to do something supernatural. Peter was bound with chains, not because he was doing something wrong, but because he was doing everything right. Somebody today said, I'm tired of doing wrong. I'm ready to do something right. I'm tired of going through these issues in my life. The chains are about to fall off. You're saying, I'm tired of going through this emotional roller coaster. The chains are about to fall off. I'm tired of being hurt over and over again. The chains are about to fall off. Somebody's about to be set free. And if you're believing God today, that the chains are about to fall off of your life. You need to open your mouth and say it with me. The chains are falling off. There was a song that was sung a few years ago called The Chain Breaker. God is about to break the chains off of your life. 
He's about to free your mind. The chains are falling. Do you understand something is shaking in your house? <laughs> something is shaking in your storefronts. Something is shaking in your life and God is stirring up some things. The chains are falling off. Peter couldn't believe it. He said, Lord, is it so? You're saying, can this thing happen for me? Can you be set free? I'm telling you the chains are breaking. And as you look at your life, you're going to say there's a turnaround. This is your turnaround season. Chains are falling. You're being loosed. You're being set free. Because this is your season. And God is saying to you today, I'm about to loose you. I'm about to set you free. He gets to a place. He goes and now God leads him out of the jailhouse. Takes him from prison. Peter's saying that, how is this so? You're going to ask God this question. Lord, how was I able to come out of this? You took me from there and you put me here. God said, all I did was show you that you can be set free. That you can be loosed. And as you look at your life today, you're going to see that everything that you thought couldn't happen, God is saying, it's going to happen. I'm talking about the supernatural. The thing that you said that you could come out of, God said, it's, it's happening supernaturally. The thing that you said that I couldn't let go, God is saying you can't let it go. Supernatural. Chains are falling. You're about to be set free. But as you look at your life, things are going to change for the good because now supernaturally some things are happening in your life. And when you turn around, you're going to say, God, thank you for setting me free. God, thank you for dropping the chains off of my life. And as you've done these things before, Lord, I know you'll do it again. And now you got a testimony. You can testify that God, thank you for allowing me to be set free. God, thank you for the chains falling off of my life and when you look at it lift your hands up and hold your head up high the thing that once had me bound now somebody shout now I want you to put it on the screen say now <laughs> I want you to so open your mouth and shout through your house and say now as you're riding down the road in your car, shout now. And say that you have been set free. The chains are falling now. Your mind is clear. And you're saying, God, you did it now. You're saying that my mind has been set free now. And everything that you promised me is happening now. The chains are falling. The chains are falling. The chains are falling. And somebody open your mouth and shout now. Supernatural. Favor. Abundance. Supernatural. God is releasing it in the atmosphere. Supernatural. God is calling the chains to fall off of your life. And it's happening now. And I pray that this message was a blessing to you. I pray that as you look at your life, that God is showing you that a light is shining upon you right now. And as that light shining upon you, the chains are falling off. Don't sit there and wait another day. Don't sit there and cry another year. Don't sit there and allow this day to pass you by. The light is shining and the chains are being loosed off of your life. When? Now. Supernatural. Things are happening for you now. You've overcome fear, but you're not afraid no more. The chains have been loosed now.
I pray this message was a blessing to you today. I pray that as you understand that you're walking in your season of the supernatural, you're walking in your season of the now, and the chains are falling off of your life. This is a testimony. This is your time to testify. And how you're testifying, you're saying, God, I'm testifying with my gift. I'm testifying with my offering. The Bible says, whoso offered praise of right, you're giving God an offering. So then as you're praising God in your homes, in your cars, in your bed, in your kitchen, wherever you may be, you're saying, God, I'm offering a praise to you. And that praise is that I'm giving you my best offering. The information is on your screen. And as you do it, you're telling God, Lord, I'm giving you this offering today for the chains that have been loosed off of my life. There are four ways to give. Follow the information on your screen. But I promise you that as you use what you're doing right now, as you use this opportunity to give, you're showing God, Lord, this is my praise because the chains have fell off of my life. I pray with you. I pray for you. And let's take this opportunity and give God praise for the chains that have been broken off of your life. God bless you until we meet again.